I'm going to give you one verse today that destroys, absolutely wipes out any system of post-tribism. Whether you go through the whole seven years or three and a half years post-trib, pre-wrath, anything that has any Christian going into this time period that many call the Great Tribulation or the Tribulation, properly called the time of Jacob's trouble or Daniel's 70th week. I'm going to give you one verse destroys their whole system. Titus chapter 1 verse 2 in your King James Bible. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Now let's look at the three parts of this verse. Number one, in hope of eternal life. When do you get eternal life? At the resurrection. You get the promise of eternal life when you get saved, but eternal life does not begin until the resurrection. And we have that hope, don't we? Whatever system you believe, you can agree on that. We can all agree on that. We have a hope of eternal life. Number two, God that cannot lie. Do you believe that God can lie? If you do, you're not worshiping the God of the Bible. God cannot lie. God is not capable of sin. Number three, promised before the world began. God made a promise and God cannot lie. Let's look at a promise that God made. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning in verse 12. That we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ. We're talking about saved people. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that ye believed, look at this, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. The redemption of the purchased possession is the resurrection. That is when eternal life begins for a Christian. The promise of eternal life that's given at salvation is fulfilled at the redemption of the purchased possession. But God promises that you're sealed. Many people call that eternal security. All right? But here's where it gets interesting. Turn back to Revelation chapter 14. Revelation 14 verses 9 through 11. Let's see if there's a group here, uh, some people are here that uh, can escape this promise that's given. Verse 9, Revelation 14, verse 9, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man, take a note of the word any, worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. The two key words, any and whosoever. There's no, well, except for Christians, except for people that are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That's not there. Anybody who takes the mark and whosoever takes the mark gets God's wrath. Hmm. How does that work out when you have Christians that are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise? A Christian goes into that time, they take the mark. God says, oh, what do I do now? I promised them that they're sealed, but I also said here in my word that if anybody takes the mark, they go to hell. What do you do with that? You say, well, a real Christian wouldn't take the mark. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and 17. And he calls us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Again, can we agree on this? Nobody can buy or sell in this coming time period unless they have the mark. Okay. Problem. 1 Timothy chapter 5. Go back to 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. You, Christian man, are commanded to provide for your wife and children. But Revelation 13 says, no man's able to buy or sell unless you have the mark. But if you take the mark in Revelation 14 verses 9 through 11, you get God's wrath and you go to hell forever. But Ephesians chapter 1 says that you're sealed until the day of redemption. And Titus chapter 1, verse 2, our verse, says God can't lie. So what's it going to be? You see, 
You're commanded in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There are proper divisions in this book. And you get somebody coming along and they tell you, I'm non-dispensational, you're dealing with a liar. You're dealing with somebody who's false, who's not truly converted. I'll tell you that right now. And what you have is, you have the King James Bible that teaches a rapture before the time of Jacob's trouble. If you want to call it the tribulation, we'll call it that. A pre-trib rapture taught in the King James Bible. And by the way, it's hundreds upon hundreds of scriptures. I'm going to leave a link in the description area there where you can link to sermons that I've done showing hundreds upon hundreds and hundreds of scriptures proving that the body of Christ is not there for the time of Jacob's trouble. Proving it. Absolutely proving it. But you see, what we have is, you have a bunch of people that are post-trib. This is the system that they're pushing right here. They're pushing the system of Roman Catholicism. This catechism teaches that there is a post-trib, they don't say rapture, but they say the church has to go through a final time of testing, through a final, final time of tribulation. So those that come out and they are teaching the post-trib rapture, all of them, without exception, become uh, believers and teachers of replacement theology. God's done with the Jews. The church is now Israel. They'll teach that. They'll teach the post-trib system. They'll teach the thing of purification. The Bible teaches that once, the, once you get saved, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. I'm cleansed from all sin because of the blood of Jesus Christ and His righteousness that's been imputed to me. I don't need to go through some future time period to be purified. The Catholics believe that they do, and they're correct. They will have to go through that time period, but it's because they're not saved. So the question comes down to it, who are you going to listen to? People that tell you that your salvation is not complete, you're going to have to go through a time of purification, and some people might not make it. Or will you listen to the Bible? Will you watch the scripture or the studies that I do and, and look at the scriptures? Open up a King James Bible to see if I'm telling you the truth. I'd recommend doing that.